And we're back with our first guest. We have a studio full of young men. And let's start. Uh, we're going to have to introduce you one by one so maybe folks out there can actually recognize your voice when you speak since I won't call you by name every single time. So we have Jim Wilborn with us. Hi, Jim. Good morning. Nice to have you. And Clint Richards. Hello. And also Adam Bartholomew. Hi, thanks for having us. Okay, he was like so far away, he's like a football field away, but <laughs> trying it out. Uh, hi, thanks for having us. Yes, now we know Adam's voice too. Okay, sorry, directional mics, it's just the hazards of the job. So last chance intervention is exactly what it sounds like, isn't it? Clint, you're a founder. I, I am the founder. Um, what we are, we're not like a traditional intervention. Uh, what we do is... We travel around different cities and we look for the drug infested areas and when once we find those areas we just uh, we start seeking people out and we generally look for people that are in their, their late 20s early 30s who really don't want to be out there anymore want to get off of drugs and um, we start asking people who wants out who wants to change and and when we find them um, we go out we look for one person at a time and so we'll get them a, a treatment scholarship at one of the treatment centers and um, you know, we'll bring them back and clean. Do addicts want out, or is it a decent, you know, I mean, do they like it? There's a lot of people that want out, and and everybody that's on the team, we're all recovering drug addicts ourselves. They've been there, done and that. Been you know, there, done that, better. and these are, these are our people out there. Um, we, we come from a place of love and compassion and understanding, so we, we go out when we find them. Uh, we're looking for somebody who's at their bottom, who's at their end, who, who wants out. Generally people that lost their families, lost their friends, don't have any money, any resources. And, uh, and we just start saying, you know, are, are you ready to get out of here? Are you ready to go change your life right now? And once we find that person, whether it be a man or a woman, we, we load them up, take them back, give them some detox and treatment, and give them an opportunity to change their life. Wow, what inspired you to found Last Chance Intervention? Well, in 2008, I had been uh, I had been struggling with crack addiction, heroin addiction, which I had been struggling with my whole life, and uh, I was I was that guy. My wife left me. I didn't have any resources. I was out of money. I was having literally the worst day of my life. And and at that moment, I started I started seeking God, and I started saying, okay, you know, I, I know that there's something out there. Whatever you are, I need some help. And within minutes, my my sister, she just appeared out of nowhere, and she gave me a bus ticket, and she said, are you ready to change? And I said, I'm ready. And from from the moment I started asking for help, within a half an hour later, I was on a bus on my way to California, Santa Barbara, to go to treatment. And it changed and your life. Changed my life. And and that was like that was a pivotal moment in my life. So from that point forward, um, I started thinking like, you know, wouldn't it be a, a good a good gift to be able to give to somebody, you know, to get a crew of people to go and and give back that moment that I was given, and. Um, so I started working in the treatment field, and I got a few resources. And uh, so I said, uh, I, I told a buddy, I said, "This is I need to do this. This is something I need to do." And over time, Jim joined me, and then Adam joined me. We have a woman that goes with us too, and um, and and we're we're growing. We're growing fast, and we have we have so many people that are helping us, that are supporting us. Uh, we just became a nonprofit organization. Uh, we just filed a uh, the application for 501c3 with the IRS last week. That's great. Now you're based in Prescott. We're based right here. All right. You know that is phenomenal. So all all of you have experienced something like this, and whatever you've done, it's worked. And so it's almost like evangelical or something. I mean, it's not, but it's not a religious movement at all. No, absolutely not. No. Um, it's we're I'd say, I would say faith based because we all have uh, somewhat of an understanding of God, the way that we all understand it on our own, and. Um, you know, we just we, we do what we feel we're supposed to be doing. Now, you talk about being among second-class citizens. Um, is, is this are these people that are not approached generally by people trying to help addicts, or what is that all about, Clint? Well, when I say second-class citizen, what I'm talking about is just your stereotypical junkie. Okay, and th and that was me. I was the I was the stereotype. I was the guy that. You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley because you would definitely be getting mugged. And and when when we look at that guy, we see him for what he really is. You know, we know that 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 outside appearance is all false. It's fake. So you know, we have no problem talking to that guy. 
and it's somebody that's generally from the normal person is not approachable, but those are our people. You know, we, we all had our times where we lived on the streets. And is it desperation, uh, what, you know, for, for money for drugs, or why would you do that to another human being? When, what, what you, when you were down and out. When I was down and yeah, out? Well, you say they'd get mugged, you know. You don't seem like the kind of guy who would... <laughs> Help! I, you're in my... No. <laughs> it's okay, Clint. But, I mean, it's it's a kind of a... When you're on drugs and stuff, there's a lot of things you do that you wouldn't do as a... a as a recovering or a non. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was a, a career criminal. You know, I, I, I did whatever I had to do to, to get my drugs, to get well, to survive, uh, and, and that meant whatever I had to do. You know, if I had to go steal something, break in somewhere, whatever, whatever I had to get done to get money in my pocket so I could get high, that's what I would do. And you know, we all know what it looks like for somebody in that position to be down and out. Somebody to be having a bad day, and to be at their bottom, and be at their low, and that's what we're, we're trying to reach them at their low. When we're out there, we're not trying to convince people that they need to get out of there. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the guy that wants to get out They're of there. They're ready. Had you guys tried other recovery programs before? Uh, what kind of programs are you talking about? Well, I mean anything. You, so you call this last chance intervention, so my guess is maybe you tried to get out before and, and it hadn't worked? Well, I, I couldn't stay sober for more than three or four days at a time. I mean, I just, I, I could not. I could not. And you know, we, we all, there, there's various different 12-step different programs. We can't talk about those because there's anonymity involved with those programs. But just the general programs of help, uh, there's a ton of them out there. And, and, but, but what we needed, what I needed, is I needed to be in a sober environment. And I needed somebody to say, look, your, your best thinking is going to kill you. And, you know, why don't you listen to this guy for a while and let him direct you and show you a different way to live. So it's a little bit of a different kind of a program that you guys are doing. No, we're, 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 we're getting people and we're giving them, we get scholarship beds at these different treatment centers and we go bring them to the different treatment centers. So you're just offering the op them the opportunity to we are, crawl we're, out. We're the middleman. We're, we're from ground zero to the first step of recovery. All right, so you're bringing them in because others, you know, they wouldn't know where to go, let's say, for resources. Exactly. Uh, maybe you don't have the means to, you know, you got a bus ticket. Maybe they don't have the means to yeah. even get to a treatment center. Exactly, exactly. So, and, and, and we're bringing these guys, you know, we, we travel all around. We go to different states. And, you know, the, the main objective is get out of here right now. Get geographically change and then work on the treatment, work on, work on solving the problem. How long have you guys been been uh, clean and sober? Well, I, I mean, you don't have to tell me, but <laughs> you know any. Well, I, I've been I've been in recovery for five years. I, five years. Uh, it, I and I say in recovery because I I stumbled a little bit, but you know five years ago is when my life changed, so I'm still here. Yeah, it's a tough thing, anything like that, whether you're you know going on a diet or whatever. Except that this is so life threatening, you know the situation you guys are in. So the fact that you could move out and that you would turn around and help other people get out that's that is phenomenal. Um, I, I have a friend whose son is in a bad situation, and I know that uh, she said, you got to talk to these guys, they're great. So you're obviously, you know, you're reaching some folks out there, making a difference for them? We are. We are. We, uh, we are going out once a month to whatever city it is we, we decide we're going to go to. And, uh, and so we, you know, we have time to plan out the scholarship, get the funding that we need, and, um, you know, and then we go do what we have to do. Okay, and speaking of funding, how are you doing this? We are struggling. <laughs> that's, that's, well, that's how we're doing it. We're, we, we are struggling right now. Uh, like, like I said before, we, we just filed our application for 501c3, and that put us in the hole $5,000. So, but you know what? People, people out there, they, they love what we're doing. And we have so much support that you know we, we met up with these women that are just phenomenal, and they're organizing car washes and different fundraising events. And it's been, it's been coming through. Um, you know, but the, even our attorney that set up our nonprofit for us, like, he gave us a great deal, and he's like, "Look, you know, you can pay us fifty dollars a month if that's all you can afford, just because he supports what we're doing." And, do you uh, go around Arizona? Where do you go? Uh, we, we, we we've been we've been to Phoenix a couple times. Um, you know, we, we only started this back on 9/11 last year, so since then we've gone to Phoenix twice, we've gone to Las Vegas twice, San Diego twice, and LA once. We are headed to Albuquerque, New Mexico, on the 19th of this month. So you're fledgling. You just seek out those pockets of folks who may be willing to to change yeah I, I mean we we it's amazing the people that have just come into our lives absolutely amazing so we're we're going to be starting to apply for some grants here pretty soon you know hopefully be able to find a, a steady source of income and know. how do people donate if they want to uh, jump in or do you need volunteers or anything well know? we are we're set up for donations at lastchanceintervention.com 
we also have a Facebook page, Last Chance Intervention, and we have multiple YouTube videos. We are, we're also a documentary crew. We film everything we do because why not? Uh, it gives, gives people that are donating to us a chance to see what we're doing. Well, it really does. I, when In the days of YouTube, I mean, now we're, we're a whole different society where everything just, you know, it, it comes in and, and that's how we learn about stuff. It's, not, you know, no other generation of people has had this kind of access to the public. So that's a phenomenal uh, thing that you're able to do. So, um, Adam, how did how'd you find these guys? Well, um, I have a, I own a recovery house myself, and um, I actually do video journals in uh, in my program. And I approached Clint one day, and we've kind of we're both men. We hold uh, these these chips on our shoulders of ego and pride, and we've never we never really approached each other. But since we were both kind of doing the same thing, we. Uh, we talked to one another, and uh, Clint asked me to join. And when he told me about what he was doing, I was absolutely thrown, um, and I couldn't help but to just gravitate towards Clint. What he was doing blew my mind. I work with a lot of people, and um, and I wanted I wanted to follow what Clint was doing. I loved what he was doing. I wanted to be a part of it, so I jumped aboard, and uh, I haven't looked back. That's amazing. And Jim, I. It sounds like you, because this is different. This is a different kind of program, don't you? Absolutely. It's you know, as far as we know, we're the only ones that are that are doing this, and uh, that's a really good reason to be doing it. Because, as we've discussed, you know, the people that we're reaching out to, they they don't have any resources. They've burned all their bridges. They don't have any benefits. Um, you know, they're they're not out there using drugs, having a good time. They're out there using drugs to to not get sick. And so, you know, they're, they're willing to go to any lengths to, to do what they need to do to support their habit. Um, but deep down inside, you know, our, our stories are all different. The suffering's the same, as I've said in the past. Um, and when you're done, you're done, you know, and, and everyone's bottom is different. Uh, but it, it is a unique uh, outreach program that I feel really fortunate to be part of. Um, the first trip, that uh, Last Chance Intervention did. Uh, I wasn't on, um, but Clint had asked me and the owner of a uh, 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 sober living facility had asked me if I could manage a couple houses for them while they were out of town. They came back and, and told me about what they did and I just deep down inside really wanted to be part of it and then lo and behold a little while later Clint asked me if I had any interest in you know going out on a trip like that and um, since then I can't get enough of it. Well, that's great. Are people responding to you? They are. <clears throat> people are responding. They're flooding in. And, um, you know, when we do go out on these, I want to say, almost adventures, excursions, and, uh, and nightmares all at the same time. But, um, you know, we do have our struggles. Are people gravitating towards us? They are. But we are out there. Our last trip, we were pounding the pavement for 12 hours and uh, come across uh, one yes per hundred no's or uh, to hear us out, um, it's tough. It's tough to come by. It's tough to come by, you know. A lot of people are in denial, as I was. Sure. It takes so. a long time, as you said, to hit, you know, hit bottom sometimes where you're willing to, to do that. Absolutely. Now, once you, you know, you get, get them, like you, um, do you pay for their recovery or? Well, what, what we do is we, we provide them with uh, with food, you know, cigarettes, their, their general needs that they need. And then we, we have these treatment centers on board that they've just been awesome to us. And they're, they're providing them with, generally what it is is a 30-day scholarship at a treatment center. And then they get their, their therapy, their one-on-one -on -one treatment, uh, get involved in some, some outpatient with a, a large group. And then uh, from there, 30 days, give them a reduced cost sober living house to where they can, they can get jobs, start paying their own way, and and it's been a struggle. We we have learned what works and what doesn't. We've been on. We've taken seven people back now. Uh, we have we have one guy right now. The last guy we got in San Diego. He was a veteran. Served for our country for five years. <coughs> has VA benefits. We got him up here, and uh, we did what we could to get him in the VA. And he's in he's in the VA right now. Um, and he's doing well. He's doing so well. But what's been really amazing is we've had a lot of exposure on the news channels. Uh, Fox 10 did an awesome story on us last year. And the people from the outside looking in, I mean, we just get flooded with phone calls and emails and people that want help. And 
Like we have helped, I don't even know how many people get get somewhere to get help, and it's just amazing. It's wow. absolutely Changing amazing. Changing the it's, world one. Yeah, like we're 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 not we're we're helping everybody around us. We've just we made a huge impact. Well, because I've heard before, addiction is not one person's problem. It's a community problem. It's a family problem. It's, absolutely, it's everybody's problem. It is everybody's problem, and you know something. That's just, uh, it's just amazing to have these people contact you and say, look, you know, what do I do, what do I do? And then you give them some simple direction, and then we get phone calls that say, look, you know, you really, you really made a big impact on my life, and thank you. You know, and it's just, uh, you know, treatment's a business. It is a business, and when you call somebody and ask for help, generally they're going to ask you to pay for their services. And, you know, so it's a, it's a lack of resources. So what we've done is we've opened up the door for people to call us and say, um, you know, what can I do? How can I get some direction? And, yeah. and it's not a problem. Phenomenal. Okay, so again, uh, people can go on what, YouTube or what to see? YouTube, Facebook, lastchanceintervention.com. That's where you can find us. Okay, and you can donate there uh, or get help? Absolutely. Like whatever. We are here for any, anything we can do to help. We can always use volunteers. Um, we're having a couple car washes on uh, the 19th of May. We're going to be running them at the same time. One of them, they're both going to be on 69. One at the Taco Bell in Frontier Village, and the other one at Discount Tire. Going to be on the 19th of May from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Problem. Okay, so I'm saying right now, I think this will probably be a national movement. <laughs> you guys are amazing. If you can, I mean, it's hard what you're doing, but if you can hang in there and, and get your get a foothold, it looks to me like this would would be. It's such a good program. It's such a great thing that. Um, and we are expanding quick. And uh, the sky's the limit. You know, we have we have no goal that we want to reach other than making an impact as as large as we possibly can, and that's exactly what we intend to do, and we are doing it. Reaching out a hand that makes a difference. That's Absolutely. great. Clint Richards, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Jim Wilborn and Adam Bartholomew, thanks for what you're doing and for joining us, and uh, best best of luck. Okay. Thank thanks you. For thanks for having us. <laughs> Don't go out there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Jim Salas, a Renaissance man. We'll find out why I call him that after this. So stay with us. All right, guys. Thank you. Right, thanks so much. Awesome. Thank nice you. to meet you, Adam. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you thank so you. much, Clint. Appreciate nice the opportunity. You. Pleasure to meet you. Great job, you guys. Man, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but we are. We have